This was a bald eagle. It was majestic and beautiful, but it fluttered its wings desperately to escape from humans. What exactly happened? Why did this group of people pursue this bald eagle so desperately? One day Mike and his friends went out fishing as usual. As usual. They enjoyed the beautiful scenery throughout the voyage. However, something suddenly caught their attention. At that time, there seemed to be something in the sea, and they suddenly became vigilant and approached slowly with curiosity. However, it was not the strange creature they imagined that was struggling on the water, but an eagle. It was hard to imagine an eagle that was supposed to be soaring in the sky actually gliding through the water. It looked like its movements were laborious. It was soaked all over. It must be heavy. When did it swim to the other side? Thinking of this, they hurriedly approached the eagle and tried to rescue it. As soon as they got close, Mike felt heartbroken. The eagle's leg appeared to be injured. Under such circumstances, it was able to persist for so long, which made people lament the tenacity and strength of life. And the eagle seemed to sense that a boat was approaching it, so it struggled harder in panic. But over time, its stamina was drained, so it slowed down a lot. Seeing this, Mike and his friends got close and ran in front of the eagle. This eagle was very handsome and had great eyes. Although the road ahead was blocked, it still held its head high, and its expression revealed vigilance and ferocity. Mike took the chance and grabbed one of its wings, but it stubbornly tried to break free and kept its eyes on Mike. Mike was scared, and it was harder to find an opportunity to act. It flapped Mike with its wings, but it failed. Soon Mike's friends started helping. They took control of the eagle's two wings. The eagle was so anxious that it could only kick its feet, but in the end it didn't help. Eventually it was forced onto the ship by them. Because the eagle's claws were very sharp, if it hurt people, it would be very serious. So after they brought the eagle onto the boat, they grabbed its wings and legs tightly to try to calm it down first. The next most important thing was to develop a relationship with this vigilant eagle to let it relax. Mike kept letting it go, trying to hold the eagle in his arms, but it didn't go so smoothly. For this eagle, who had lived in the competitive nature for many years, it might lose its life if it was not careful, so it stared at Mike, trying to see his intentions. It was trying hard not to let Mike hold it completely, and when it got excited, it hurt Mike. It thought Mike would take anger at it, but instead of blaming it, Mike reassured it and smiled at it over and over again. Such a move made the eagle feel very warm. So it sat peacefully in Mike's arms. That's when Mike noticed that it had really beautiful eyes. It could be seen from its clear eyes that it was a kind eagle. When they returned they healed the wound on its leg. They had a great time with the eagle while recuperating. But they both knew it had to return to nature. On a sunny day, they took it out into the wild in a cardboard box, and they took a deep breath and opened the lid. The moment the lid was opened, the eagle couldn't wait to fly out. The way it left decisively seemed to tell Mike not to worry about it, it could live just fine. In that process, the eagle got the help of Mike, and Mike was very happy for this unusual experience, and even realized his value. The mutual help between humans and animals reflects a two-way act of redemption, which has nothing to do with who pays more. As long as all things can join hands, all disasters will be transformed into a feast of encounters, and there are countless such feasts. Family stumbled upon a small and shivering dog lying in the snow on a cold winter evening. Little did they know this chance encounter would change their lives forever. This video will take you on an emotional journey and what they found under. The dog's body will leave you speechless and teary-eyed. A real heart-wrenching story with a happy end you don't want to miss. It was a cold and snowy winter evening when John 
and his family returned home from the evening church service. They bundled up in warm coats and scarves and set out into the falling snow. As they walked back home, in the corner just around their house, they noticed a faint movement out of the corner of their eye. They were not sure what to expect especially under these snowy conditions. Initially, the family thought it was a wild bear. So they started to back off. However, suddenly, they heard a familiar sound, something similar to a dog's cry. Curious, they followed the movement to a small clearing, where they were shocked by what they saw. There, they found a dog lying in the snow. At first, they thought the dog was ready to die as she was covered in snow. But as they got closer, they saw her chest rise and fall. Due to her shallow breaths because of the extreme cold. She was small and scruffy looking and appeared to be in poor condition. John and his family were instantly filled with concern for the dog's well-being. And they reached out to touch her. But she growled and bared her teeth. They backed off, realizing they needed to be careful around the wild dog. But they still wanted to help her. John and his family knew that the dog was frightened. And in a state of survival mode. So they approached her slowly and cautiously. Speaking softly to her in an effort to soothe her. They also moved slowly and carefully so as not to startle her. John was carrying some leftover sandwiches. So they offered her some food which she initially refused. But after a few times, she started to take small bites, which helped build a sense of trust and comfort with them. Slowly, she allowed them to touch her. And they used this opportunity to reinforce the idea that they were there to help her, not hurt her. With a lot of patience, John and his family were able to build trust with the dog and were ultimately able to wrap her in a blanket and bring her back home. They laid her on a warm blanket in front of the fireplace to begin to recover from the cold. In her poor condition, the dog seemed to relax a bit but still appeared to be in poor condition. As they began to examine the dog more closely, they noticed that her fur was matted and dirty, and she had cuts and bruises all over her body. They also noticed that her ribs were sticking out. And she was terribly underweight. Which led them to realize that this dog had been through a lot. As they were examining her. They noticed that the dog had started to whine and tremble. At first, they thought it was just because she was cold and scared. But then they noticed something strange. The dog's belly was moving. And they were completely shocked by what they discovered next. They were horrified to see that the dog was hiding puppies under her body. They were horrified to think that this poor dog had been out in the cold. And Snow trying to keep her puppies alive. They immediately knew that they needed to help her and her puppies. They fed the dog some warm broth and began to groom her. The snow might have continued to fall outside. But inside, there was warmth and love in the hearts of John and his family. The next morning, John called the local vet, who came to check on the dog's condition, and gave necessary vaccinations and medical treatment to her and the puppies. Over the next few days, the dog began to recover. Her fur became shiny and clean, and she began to gain weight. Her puppies, which were only a few weeks old, were also healthy and strong. They were all really happy to be with a loving family who cared for them. The family knew that they couldn't keep the dog and her puppies forever. They reached out to local animal shelters and rescue groups to find the dog. And her puppies a loving forever home. In the end, the dog and her puppies were finally in a safe place. Surrounded by people who loved and cared for them. John and his family felt happy knowing that. They had made a difference in the lives of these animals. The experience also taught them about the responsibility of taking care of living beings and the importance of being kind and compassionate to all living creatures. If you love this heartwarming tale and want to see more like it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have plenty more stories of animals who have overcome adversity.
and found their happily ever after. And we can't wait to share them with you. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. See you in the next one. When Jason and Sally took their deaf son to the zoo for the first time. They were so excited to see how he would react. But when the baby stopped outside the lion's enclosure. The king of the savannah did something so completely unexpected. That it left people shocked. Jason and Sally had dreamed of having a baby from the moment they met. They were both in their mid-thirties and knew that. They would never find a better partner to build a family with. They got married shortly after their first date. And immediately started trying to fall pregnant. But it quickly became apparent that it wasn't going to be easy. Waiting was heartbreaking, but after a year of trying. They were finally blessed with the news that they were expecting. They were very excited at the prospect of finally having the child. They had been praying for all along. Sally followed every protocol by the book to ensure that the pregnancy was successful and healthy. But she really struggled with it from conception all the way to birth. She found herself very sick all the time. The doctors weren't too concerned. Though, as they said the nausea was perfectly natural. According to them, some women just have a tough time during their pregnancies. And that's all. Their narrative changed very quickly, though. Once the little boy was born. He seemed healthy enough at first. But at just six weeks old. It started becoming clear that something was wrong with him. The little baby would cry for hours on end. And it didn't matter what lullaby Sally sang or. What noise machine they used, he simply wouldn't soothe. He also didn't react to loud noises. On one specific occasion, Sally finally realized what was wrong with her baby. He was just seven weeks old. And they were renovating the house. She liked to take the baby out to get away from the noise. But that day she had to stay at home. She prepared herself to deal with a hysterical baby crying all the time. Due to all the construction noise. But the tantrums never happened. The little baby slept as though there was no noise to be heard. Massive alarm bells began to ring in Sally's head. She was sure that this couldn't be normal. She and her husband took their son straight to the pediatrician. To get some testing done. They were referred straight away to an audiologist. As it was his hearing that they were most concerned about. Sure enough, once the test came back. It was confirmed that their little boy was, in fact, deaf. They realized that he must have been born that way. And the issue was only picked up later. Sally and Jason began to grow extremely concerned about their son. Naturally. They were worried about how his diagnosis was going to affect his life. They would have to make some serious adaptations to their way of living. In order to accommodate their son's condition. They grieved for the life they hoped their son might have. And made a promise to one another to try and support him in the best way possible. They wanted him to have as normal of a childhood as possible. So they continued with their raising with love. Care, but with sign language instead of verbal communication. And despite this little hiccup. The baby soon bloomed into a happy, curious child. It quickly became apparent that. Their son was drawn to wild animals in any form. He would light up whenever they read safari stories. Or showed him some documentary shows. They were elated to note that he took such an interest in them. They bonded with him over his love for lions, elephants. And giraffes, just to name a few. Sally and Jason learned how to sign the names of all the animals. He loved to encourage his passion. Even though he was so young. They had a growing hope that with this passion. He could lead a life where he didn't feel so different. After all, animals can sometimes be more compassionate than humans. Then, when their little boy turned one. They decided to take him to the zoo for the very first time. He was just becoming mobile. So they knew he would have a ball running around and looking at the animals. They could never have anticipated what was going to happen. 
The little family had been at the zoo for just under an hour. When they finally got to the African section. This was where they knew their son would be most excited. He could see all his favorite animals in one place. So far. He had seen quite a few animals from around the world as they walked. Sally made a note of which ones he seemed to like more. And wrote down the names. As she was determined to teach him the names of. The animals in sign language. From the moment their son saw his first giraffe. It immediately became apparent that he was in heaven. His little face lit up. And he began trying to wiggle out of his pram. Jason simply laughed and released his son from the seat belt. The little boy bolted towards the enclosure glass and just kept giggling. He would turn to his parents and sign the word, giraffe, over and over again. Sally and Jason had tears of joy in their eyes. They could hardly believe how happy their little boy was. Then he suddenly got distracted and ran towards another enclosure. From the start. They weren't quite sure what animal resided in that area. But when they saw the sign. They realized it was the lion enclosure. Their little baby simply plumped down on the ground outside the enclosure. And stared at his reflection in the glass. What he couldn't see was the big alpha male lion. That had taken an interest in him. Sally noticed him first as he sauntered down from where. He had been napping and walked right up to the glass. Where the baby was sitting. Sally immediately started taking a video of the interaction. She was hoping that when her son turned around and saw the lion. He would be overjoyed. She never could have anticipated what was actually about to happen. The lion pushed itself right up onto the glass by the baby. And began to pace up and down a little. Then, out of nowhere. The big lion pounced at the glass where the baby was. At first, Sally and Jason thought that the lion was just playing. But then he reared up again and pounced once more in the direction of the baby. Smacking himself on the thick glass that lay between them. That's when they realized that the lion was. In fact, trying to attack the baby. They were horrified at the sight. But luckily, their son hadn't noticed just yet. Jason scooped the baby up in his arms and put a little distance. Between them and the glass. When his son saw the lion for the first time. However, he simply squealed with delight. He was completely unaware of what had taken place just a few minutes prior. Sally and Jason were bewildered by the encounter. But glad that their son hadn't noticed. After all, the last thing they wanted was for him to. Become afraid of an animal he loved so much. They called over a zoo employee and showed him the video. The employee chuckled and explained that this particular lion was known for playing tricks on people that came too close to the glass of his enclosure. Turns out he wasn't very old himself. So he still had that very playful side in him. He was sort of like a teenager pranking an adult. Sally and Jason understood that the lion had indeed been playing like they had thought in the beginning and breathed a sigh of relief. They knew that he couldn't have hurt their baby through the glass. But were still glad to know that he hadn't even tried. And in a weird turn of events. They were also thankful for their son's deafness because. It had prevented him from turning towards the lion and witnessing. That scary scene. The little family continued on through their tour of the zoo. And their son was simply delighted. It was clear that this would be one of his favorite things to do on the weekends for a long time to come. Sally and Jason decided to keep the video of the lion for when he grew up. Thinking that maybe then he could appreciate it for what it was. They wanted him to like animals growing up. Not be scared of them. And maybe one day he'd work alongside the same employee. Who had introduced them to a prankster lion. Here's the amazing story of how wolves found babies next to their dead parents. It's unbelievable what wolves do to babies. Evan lives in the village with his elderly grandfather. The boy doesn't remember his parents. And when he asks his grandfather about them. He avoids answering and tells him that his father is dead. 
whenever the boy and his grandfather wandered in the woods. They would encounter a wolf there. And the animal would approach the boy and lick him. Leading Ivan to think he was a dog. He was touching him too, stroking his head. But one day his grandfather told him it was a wolf. Confused, the little boy asked his grandpa the difference. Between a dog and a wolf because they are very similar. Grandfather kept walking in the woods. Describing wolves to him and the difference between him and dogs. Grandfather Nicotine once loved his grandson very much. And regarded him as his friend. Calling him Worf since he was a child. Growing up. Ivan tried to understand why his grandfather gave him this name. But his grandfather told him that he loved wolves so much. That he gave him the name. The two used to go to the big field owned by their grandfather outside the village. Where they plowed and grew vegetables. They cut the grass in the spring and put it in the stables. So that the cows my grandfather had in the stables would eat it. One day, the grandson asked grandpa why he didn't look like him. The face or the hair. Or even the color of the hair was different. Which left the grandfather speechless in shock. The seven-year-old boy was upset and began to. Blame his grandpa for not answering him for many questions. Grandpa sat down with a sigh. Asked his grandson to sit down. And started talking to him. According to the grandfather. The story goes back to eight years ago. When a group of Romans came to the village, where his wife and only daughter Megia lived. There they pitched a large camp. And resolved to stay till the winter was over. And continue their way. The gypsies would have parties. Dance and have fun. And the villagers would visit them. Magia was one of those who enjoyed watching the gypsies dance and sing. Someone approached her one day. A strong. Handsome guy wants to befriend her. But she refuses at first because he is a stranger to her. And knows nothing about him. But as time goes by. She starts talking to him and finds him a smart and lovely guy. And the two fall in love. The young man's name was Nicodemus. An Italian of Greek descent who had lived in Russia since childhood. Megia told her parents that she loved the young man and wanted to marry him. But the grandfather and his wife refused. Telling their daughter that the young man would leave. And would not come back. And that they did not want to be gypsies because of their life was cruel. And she couldn't adapt. Megia decides to meet him secretly. She loves him and starts spending most of her time with him. As the time for the departure of the gypsy caravan approached. Nicodemus tried to persuade her to go with him. But the young woman refused and said goodbye. Crying home. The gypsy left. And Megia kept weeping in front of the house. But suddenly Nicodemus stood before her smiling. Holding a ring and proposing to her. The young woman was so happy that she hurried to tell her parents. When they agreed. She moved into a wooden house not far from her father's house. Magia and her husband are spending quality time together. Something that all the villagers relish. Despite being a different size. Nicodemus also has black long curly hair. Brown eyes, and a black beard. But he is well liked by everyone because he is an energetic smart guy. Who can do many things. He is proficient in many trades. Megia gave birth to a beautiful boy who looked like his father. They take care of him and take him to the forest to play. One day. As the couple wandered in the woods. The father held his seven-month-old in his arms. And Magia was walking. Looking for fruit in the forest. When the couple reached the freeway. Megia noticed a wolf pup in the middle of the road as cars sped toward him. She then screamed and ran to save him. And just as she was holding him in her arms. The car slammed into her heart. Knocking her in the middle of the road, dead or alive. Meanwhile, Nicodemus ran toward his wife screaming. But the other truck failed its brakes. 
and was still crawling on the ground as the driver tried to stop, hitting the man. Meanwhile, both the truck driver and the car driver fled, leaving the bleeding couple behind. The little boy was lucky enough to escape unharmed. The little wolf didn't die either, and kept barking on the side of the road. When a pack of wolves came, and left the forest with the little wolf and a child. Grandpa Nicodemus and his wife have been looking for their daughter, and family but they have not been found. When they asked the villagers for help, they found Megia and her husband dead, and the little boy disappeared without any trace of him. Days passed and the grandparents were still looking for the boy, but they did not find him. Grandpa was desperate, and the grandmother is looking for her grandson every day, because she thinks he is alive and that he might be somewhere in the forest. One month after the accident, Grandma went to the woods to look for it as usual. There she was picking mushrooms, hoping to find her grandson, but slowly began to lose hope of finding him. Grandma was tired and sat down to rest, but wanted to go to the nearby woods to have a look. The grandmother entered a forest much larger than the adjacent forest of the village where she lived. When she came to a flowing river, she saw a pack of wolves running and jumping there. She didn't want to get close to the ferocious animals. But the way the wolves jumped and spun around something in between made her slink up close to see what was going on. When the grandmother looked down from a large rock below, she saw four puppies circling and interacting with a small child, who burst out laughing. Grandma looked at the little face and was shocked. It turned out that this was her grandson. She wanted to get close to him and take him with her. But she was afraid. Because a large pack of wolves had returned to the den. And if they saw her, they might attack and prey on her. As night fell, my grandmother came home and told my grandfather what she had seen. The grandfather decided to pick up his grandson the next day. Early the next morning, the two of them got up early. And grandpa took the weapon and hurried to that place. When the two arrived at the den, he found the boy sleeping. Surrounded by three young wolves. But the others were absent. Grandpa took out his gun and approached the pups. He removed two of them and held the boy in his arms. But the third puppy still held on to him. Preventing his grandfather from carrying the boy away. Meanwhile, the grandfather hit him with the butt of his gun. Knocked him to the ground. And walked away with his grandson and wife. Before the wolves returned. On the way. Grandpa noticed that the pup had been chasing him and his wife despite his several attempts to threaten him with a rifle. To no avail. The grandfather finished his story, sighed, and let the grandson approach him, and told him that he was the boy in the story, and that the wolf who came with him into the forest was his little wolf. His parents helped the little wolf. So it stayed with him for so long. The grandson approached his grandfather and hugged him, before asking him about his grandmother. The grandfather told him she died three months after finding him. When he heard the whole story, Ivan was very excited to meet his friend, who protected him for so long and approached him every day. When he went to